Plastic Energy, which is based in London, is a global leader in chemical recycling and offers a sustainable solution to help prevent plastic pollution. Now, the company's patented and proven technology converts previously unrecyclable plastic waste into recycled oils, which are then used to create virgin quality recycled plastics. Now, currently, the company has two commercial recycling plants in Spain, along with ongoing projects in Europe, the United States and Asia. I think it's fair to say they are very, very busy, which is why I'm delighted to welcome to the studio Carlos Moria. Now, Carlos is the founder and chief executive of Plastic Energy. So thank you so much for joining us. You know, everybody's talking about plastic at the moment, but what was it that really led you to set up the company in the first place? What was your trigger? Plastic Energy was founded uh, uh, after I saw the opportunity to uh, increase recycling of uh, uh, plastics that could not be mechanical recycled. And then this, uh, after working several years in, in the alternative energy industry, then I saw the opportunity to reduce the uh, plastic pollution. And that uh, really became my dream. And uh, that is where we are right now. We have developed a technology that is a uh, thermal anaerobic uh, uh, conversion process that allows to uh, convert uh, end-of-life plastics into valuable output that we call tacoil that can be used to replace fossil oil in the production of new plastics. And as you said, we have two operating plants in Spain uh, since the, uh, five years ago, and this is running 24-7, the and they're very pleased with the, uh, with the current situation. Yeah, there's potential there for more growth of, as well going forward. But you talked there about the technology, which I referenced in my introduction. Tell me a little bit more about it, because specifically, how is it different to the traditional mechanical recycling methods? Are you ahead of the game in terms of what you do, how you tackle this problem? Yeah, there is a, our process is really complementary to mechanical recycling. So it's, it's not by no means to try to... Uh, to stop mechanical recycling, it has a, a but can complement it. And the, the way that is, for example, there are the, in our process, we do not have to separate a, a plastics by type of polymer. We don't have to wash the, the plastics, and we can just blend it all together and process it and convert it into a valuable product. Normally, uh, using mechanical recycling processes, you end up downcycling the final product because of the quality that you can produce. In our case, the output that we produce in our process, it has exactly the same type of uh, uh, specs and characteristics than the original virgin uh, oil that can be used for uh, to produce plastics. And that make us, uh, give us the opportunity to be able to produce uh, food grade applications out of our uh, recycling plastics. So it, it actually makes the traditional methods more efficient? I would say that is, uh, you have to complement it. The traditional method really it, uh, has to continue it. It is uh, for certain applications that you can really separate the type of plastic, for example, for PET applications. It might make more sense for the bottles to be able to use mechanical recycling processes. However, for the other type of plastics like uh, uh, flexible packaging or films, it is very difficult to use mechanical recycling processes because it's uh, uh, make the process extremely expensive and then you don't use it uh, for, really, for any upcycling type of solution. OK, so look, again, another one of the big buzzwords that we have in the 21st century is this, this word sustainability, or if you actually turn it into a phrase, sustainability goals. So in what way does your recycling process actually complement that and perhaps take it further? Our process has accepts, uh, <clears throat> as I was mentioning, the old type of plastics, and this is, uh, and that is uh, really helps to reduce plastic pollution and leakage into the environment. Mainly, the type of plastic that we are addressing are the ones that end up normally into incineration, landfilling, or leakage, and we try to avoid that. Those type of plastics, they, uh, thanks to our process, uh, we convert it into a, a valuable product, tacoil that can be used as a replacement of fossil oil uh, uh, sources to produce new plastics. And that is the beauty of this process. But uh, clearly, that helps to uh, really reduce the uh, environmental impact of having those plastics going anywhere in the, uh, within the uh, our Earth.
Yeah, in fact, you've, you've answered the question I was going to put to you, which, which is really how um, what you're doing actually uh, reduces the impact of plastics going forward into the future, because clearly it is a major talking point and something which a lot of people, not necessarily just environmental activists, but they, they do get very concerned about. It's about plastic. It's about the potential to cause damage into the future. So how do you think that you can reduce the impact of plastics? Well, in different ways, I would say that from the input to the output. On the input side, it's because that we can use plastics that today, unfortunately, they don't have uh, the proper uh, solution and they end up into the landfills or incineration or leakage if not properly collected, like happens in many uh, developing countries. So we can provide a solution to those type of plastics. And then on the output side, because we produce a valuable product, that replace fossil oils and reduce the extraction of feature oils that have to be used to produce any type of packaging that can be done with our process. And that is really helping to, uh, uh, towards uh, trying to uh, reduce the environmental impact. And uh, uh, as we have demonstrated with, uh, lately with a LC8 life cycle analysis that it was produced by an independent consultant that uh, demonstrated that the, the uh, that we can produce plastics with a lower climate impact uh, change than it will be happening with uh, for using fossil oil to feed stocks. I mean, there's so much talk about sustainability goals, but what are the company's own sustainability goals? Do you, can you outline them to me? A few months ago, we uh, produced our first sustainability report um, that it was, uh, is public in our web page. And uh, I invite anyone to, uh, to take a look and read it because really, uh, it's very interesting to see that uh, our uh, technology could be able to uh, reduce and have a lower cl climate uh, impact uh, than producing plastics using fossil oil feedstocks, mm. or more important, that even uh, we can reduce the uh, CO2 footprint by processing plastics that today end up into incineration with energy recovery. And that's an important element because the most of the plastics today, uh, in, at least in Europe, end up, the biggest percentage, end up into incineration. And we can replace that solution with an alternative solution with a much lower CO2 footprint, which is very important. And uh, for us, uh, clearly, going and trying to reduce the uh, energy uh, consumption of the process is critical because that will even improve and help to reduce the CO2 footprint, which is what we want to do. Because at the end of the day, uh, yes, the technology is good to recycle plastics, but uh, our mission doesn't have to finish with that. Our mission has to finish by really providing a solution that has a very positive environmental impact, which is what uh, we all want, and not only to focus in one particular solution. We need to be able to provide the, the proper global solution for, to the environment. Mm. If you and I were to meet in five years' time, what sort of a company would we be talking about? We know what plastic energy is doing now, where it has a presence. How different will the company be in five years' time to how it is now? Well, the, <clears throat> we are uh, challenging ourselves with the uh, commitments that, uh, for example, we have signed uh, uh, the Ellen MacArthur uh, global economy plastic uh, uh, commitments to reduce, uh, we have committed to, uh, to process uh, at least 300,000 tons of plastics through our processes by 2025. We have also uh, signed, uh, for example, with the United Nations uh, uh, Global Compact uh, in order for us to align with the SDG uh, targets of the United Nations. Uh, also, we are collaborating with the whole value chain, producing, for example, products um, using our technology uh, and processing end-of-life plastics and convert it into uh, examples that we can give of, uh, let's say, uh, um, the uh, Magnum ice cream packaging or other type of examples with companies like Tupperware or the, uh, Bradbury, Bradbury cheese uh, packaging in the UK. So there are different type of examples, but at the end of the day, what is important that moving from these 300,000 tons that we have committed with the MacArthur Foundation and by 2025, we want to increase that number to process 5 million tons of plastics by 2030. And we are going to do that 
using the experience that we have developed over the last five years with our existing two plants operational in Spain. And then we are now in the process of building three plants in Europe, in the, in the Netherlands and two of them in France. And that is only the first phase of a longer, bigger rollout of projects in different places in Asia, Europe and the USA, like the project that we announced yesterday in the USA to, to start building a, a plant in Texas. Given the urgency surrounding plastics, do you see yourself perhaps reaching those deadlines before, or the targets before those deadlines? Could you actually see you uh, uh, producing, uh, well, well, certainly recycling more waste? I think 300,000 was the, the figure that you mentioned. Yeah. Could you see yourself reaching that before 2025? Because 2025 isn't that far away. Yeah, I, I wish we could be able to do it earlier, but uh, sincerely, this, uh, this process takes some time. It's, uh, we are building assets uh, that it takes uh, almost uh, one year to, uh, to get the permitting to, to be able to build the plants. It takes uh, two years to build the plant, and uh, so it is a process. It's going to uh, go quicker after the three or four years because moving from 300,000 tons to a target of processing 5 million tons by 2030, uh, that is a big change. But that is because that really the industry needs some time. Uh, we are implementing different regulations and the, uh, the, the market is not ready today to be able to properly collect the type of plastics that we want to process. And that is something that is uh, critical for the industry to go and analyze the whole value chain. We are focusing today in plastics, Yes, but it is critical to be able to also focus on the collection of the waste in general, mm -hmm. because if we don't collect it, then it's in totally impossible to do anything with that. And if we don't collect it, it will end up where we don't want that waste to end up in, in the environment. So we have to change that. But that is going to take time. And unfortunately, any other type of materials used for uh, any other type of applications like glass or paper, it took those industries almost 30 years to be able to get to where they are today. But it all started even with us as a society. We need to try to reduce the, uh, uh, the use of plastics. We need to reuse it as, as many times as the, our grandparents used to do with whatever, uh, whatever type of material that they were using. Mm -hmm. I, I used to pass my clothing to my, to my brothers and sisters. And, it is, and now that is, doesn't happen anymore. We are all moving very, extremely fast in our society. Sure. So somehow we are not reinventing the circular economy. We are just trying to address and the plastics is going to be something that is going to take some mm. time, but I'm confident that over the next 10 years, and I'm sorry to say 10 years, but it's going to move fast. And I believe the whole value chain is fully committed to be able to give a better life and reduce the environmental impact of using plastics right. in our society. It puts society. the pressure on you because you're obviously part of, part of this process, but I guess as well that that makes it quite exciting as well, the challenge mm -hmm. to refine your techniques, refine what it is that you're doing and lead the way for the sector. That is uh, critical. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's extremely, uh, uh, um, I would say, it, I'm extremely passionate about uh, looking for solutions. It's the uh, focus it on the technology. The, tec the technology has been proven. And really, right now, it's a question to really provide uh, uh, solutions and the, uh, because the technology is there. So now it's really a question to all together, everyone, to uh, uh, work their own part of the, of the puzzle and to be able to build the solution, which is not going to happen only by regulations. It's not going to happen by the society demanding a solution. We all have to do it every single day in our own houses. And then there will be a, a waste management company that will collect the waste that then will be sorted and it will be processed and then we will be able to increase not only the recycling, which is important, if we don't produce it, if we don't use it and if we can re reuse it, it will reduce the amount of recycling that has to be done. Sure. But clearly there is not one only solution. You right. cannot ban the materials because it is it's good. Okay, look, Carlos, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us in the studio and taking us through the work that you do and what you're doing as well to, to help the environment and to help the plastic sector as well, because it is very, very complicated, but you've also shown us how it's, it's possible and the complexities of that journey. But Carlos Morial, founder and chief executive of Plastic Energy, good luck with what you do and hopefully 
We will meet again in a few years' time, and you can tell us more about the plants and how they're working and other projects which you'll have as well on that journey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers.